four kids, aging from five to ten years old, were murdered in cold blood in the bathroom of their one-room flat apartment in Geylang Bahru. This case remains unsolved as of 2020, but there were rumours that the entire neighbourhood and even the parents of the children knew who did this, but chose to remain silent. This is the story of the Geylang Bahru family murder. Hi guys! Oh my god, it's been so long since I've talked in front of the camera. Anyways, this video is suggested by Roger Tan, so thank you for suggesting this video idea. If you guys have anything you want me to cover, please let me know in the comments. On the morning of 6th January 1979, it was like any other day for the Tan family. The couple ran a minibus company, so as usual, they left their flat at around 6.35am in the morning to send students to school. Their four children, Tan Kok Ping, Tan Kok Hin, Tan Kok Sun, and Tan Chini, were sleeping when they left. Mrs. Tan called home at around 7.10am to wake them up as usual, but received no response after three separate calls. She then asked one of their neighbours to wake the children up. The neighbour also went to knock on their doors, but there was also no response. When the couple arrived home after 10am, they found slashed bodies of their four children in the bathroom. The kids were found in t-shirt and pants and all four had slashed wounds on their heads. Kok Ping, the oldest child's right arm was almost severed and there were also slashed wounds found on Chini's face. The children were reported to have at least 20 slashed wounds each. During investigations, police actually concluded that the murders were premeditated and that the killer or killers had actually made sure to not leave any incriminating evidence behind. Bloodstains were also found in the kitchen sink, therefore it was believed that the killer had cleaned him or herself before leaving the flat. This was where I felt that there was more than one killer because you see, there was actually four children and I would say it would be impossible to keep all four children under control like they would probably be screaming and shouting for help. It's either the killer brought them one by one to the bathroom to slash them or there might be another killer who was keeping the kids under control. There was no evidence of forced entry and the flat was not ransacked and nothing was missing. The murder weapons, believed to be a chopper taken from the kitchen as well as a dagger, were not found. Two weeks after the murder, the Tan couple actually received a Chinese New Year card with an image of happy children playing. It was addressed to the couple by their nicknames A Chai and A Ing. Now you can have no more offsprings. Ha 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 ha. Sign off by the murderer. The letter actually referenced to the mother's previous sterilization, which was a secret that only close friends and relatives knows about. This leads police to believe that the murderer had intimate knowledge of the Tan family and their background. One of the Tan neighbors, 68-year-old Yang Ying Ting, said that she usually sat along the common corridor to watch the children play. However, on the morning of the murders, she was washing her hair and did not see anyone entering or leaving the Tan family's flat. A taxi driver from Tupayo later reported that a man in his 20s who walked with a lurch had boarded his taxi near Block 96 along Kalang Baru Road near the location of the murder at about 8am that morning. The taxi driver said that the man had bloodstains on the left side of his body and carried a knife that banged against the taxi door. Mr. Tan actually matched the taxi driver's description to a neighbor's office. A young man who visited the family's flat almost daily to use their phone. He was known as uncle to the family. If you guys don't know, in Singapore, we usually refer to an unrelated, much older male friend as uncle out of respect. So in the police lineup, the taxi driver actually picked out the uncle as the man who had boarded the taxi that morning. However, due to insufficient evidence, the man was actually released and subsequently he actually moved out of Block 58 with his sister. Even though this case remains unsolved, there were actually a lot of rumours that the uncle was indeed the killer and that the entire neighbourhood, including the couple, were aware of it. Allegedly, the couple was supposed to buy 4D numbers for this uncle and his number actually came out as winning. So when the uncle went to their place to collect the winnings, the couple claimed that they had forgotten to buy for him. The uncle got really angry and didn't believe them. Subsequently, the couple actually bought new minibuses for their business. So the uncle assumed that they have kept the winnings to themselves. As an act of revenge, he then murdered the children to end their bloodline as he knew that Mrs. Tan had sterilization done. In East Asian culture, especially in the olden days, not having an offspring to like continue your bloodline was a shame to the family. So allegedly, the reason why the couple would not report him was because they were involved in drug activities and that the uncle was in a street gang. So if the Tans were to report him to the police, he might rat them out and they would get arrested by the police. So allegedly, everyone in the area knew that the uncle murdered the kids but chose to keep quiet because they were afraid of the gangs, which will explain why no one was willing to give any information to the police and that the granny who usually watched the kids play happened to be washing her hair that day. The crime remains unsolved as of 2020, but this is the most possible conclusion and I would say the most widely accepted. 
what do you think? Do you think it was the uncle? Do you think it was someone else? Do you think there was more than one killer? Let me know in the comments down below and see you in the next one. Bye. She then once. She then asked. She then.